back and feel for the first time something big was coming? No, we didn't, uh, and it turned out to be a good move. It just shows you that fathers don't always know best. Sometimes the daughters know best, and uh, she did well by making that decision to switch to track and field. And then on to Roberts Wesley. And uh, I talk now, Mark, about uh, her, her move to Roberts Wesley and after four years at Fredonia High School and uh, competing in basketball track and field out there. Yeah, she had scholarship in basketball. She had a few different colleges looking at her to uh, to come play basketball for them. And, uh, of course, uh, of course, when uh, she did uh, get the basketball scholarship, she wanted to do track, but her uh, basketball coach was a little tight-fisted, didn't want her to get injured on the track as long as they were giving her the scholarship for basketball. So he, uh, he let her compete, but it was very limited. And then her senior year, he kind of gave her the free reign to go ahead and compete. When did she really start getting involved with the pole vaulting? How did that all come about? It was her, her senior year in college, and Rick saw her playing pickup basketball with some of the guys and just noticed her toughness and asked her if she wanted to try pole vault. And she really wasn't interested at first, but then finally gave it a shot. And her first, she may have been nine feet going over, and I can remember her calling home and saying, oh, I did ten feet. And we'd say, oh, good. And, you know, we didn't know if that was good or bad, and, and she'd go 11 feet and then 12 feet. 13 feet, and it just um, kept going up. And, and Mark, also, uh, with, the, with the pole vault, uh, when uh, she decides uh, that pole vaulting could be a pretty good career, talk about that thought. Well, yeah, she was in the last year of her master's program at Roberts Wesleyan, and uh, I remember getting a phone call that said she was going to uh, withdraw from school and uh, continue to take uh, try pole vaulting to make a living. And at that time, I didn't even know there was a professional or an elite track and field. And uh, we had no idea that she could uh, make a living doing pole vault. We'd never heard of that. And, uh, of course, being a good parent, we encouraged her and said, you can do anything you put your mind to. And we know that your toughness and your aggressiveness. And uh, we, we know you've made good decisions in the past. And as soon as I hung up the phone, I looked at Sue and I said, I think she's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but you've had a chance to see her do it. And when, when you saw her do the pole vaulting at an amazing height, what were your thoughts then? Well, uh, it was the first national championship that uh, I think she jumped 14-3. It was at Cornell University, was it? I can't remember exactly where it was, but when she uh, jumped that height, it uh, took the national championship. And she was uh, so naive to the scoring structure herself, she didn't even know she won the meet. Her, uh, her coaches were all celebrating, and she was putting her poles away. She thought it was over. But it's been a great, uh, a great career so far, and uh, as we said, 2012, the gold medal, and then 2016, uh, perhaps, and we'll have to wait and see if it's a, a defending championship and the gold medal, but uh, that's just four more years of tough training. That is, it's a long commitment, it's another four years, and it's a long time to, uh, to sacrifice all that you have to sacrifice, and uh, your body has to stay healthy, and you're starting to age a little bit, so we'll see what happens. Thank you very much. We'll talk more during the next hour. Coming up with these Tosinskis, so Sue and Mark here this morning on WDOE after these messages and ABC News. Yeah, you're going to have to like lean a little closer. Right? <laughs> right <on. laughs>